For 75 years, America has dominated the skies, but the future of air supremacy might never leave the ground. September 15, 2020. In a room full of the world's top defense experts, one man was about to reveal America's biggest military secret since the Manhattan Project. Dr. Will Roper, the Air Force's chief weapons buyer, stepped to the podium. What he said next would stun the aerospace world. We have already built and flown a next-generation fighter. No warnings, no photographs, no press releases. The future of aerial warfare wasn't coming, it was already here. But four years later, this revolutionary aircraft, America's most ambitious aviation project since the Wright brothers, faces a $300 million question. Will the most advanced fighter jet in human history be able to take flight? Today, we take you inside the classified program that could reshape aerial warfare forever, or become the most expensive aircraft that never was. The secret program, 2014. Inside a heavily guarded DARPA facility in Arlington, Virginia, a small team of engineers gathered around a computer simulation that would change aerial warfare forever. Their mission? To build a fighter jet that would leave even the legendary SR-71 Blackbird in the dust of military history. Codename, Project Dominance. Classification level, above top secret. Even its budget was hidden within other programs. What made this project different wasn't just its secrecy, it was its audacity. The vision was revolutionary. A fighter jet that could control autonomous wingmen, process vast amounts of data in real time, and adapt its capabilities through modular design. Think about this. While the F-22 Raptor can detect an enemy fighter from 100 miles away, Project Dominance aimed for double that range. While the F-35 processes 400 gigabytes of data per second, this new fighter would handle terabytes. When a human pilot takes 300 milliseconds to react, this aircraft's AI brain would respond in less than one. The breakthrough came through something called digital engineering, a revolutionary approach that had never been attempted at this scale. Every system, every component, every possible failure mode was tested millions of times in virtual reality. Engineers could simulate 10 years of combat operations in a single weekend. They discovered problems that wouldn't have shown up until years into traditional development, and they fixed them before a single rivet was installed. By early 2020, something extraordinary emerged from these digital simulations. Not just blueprints, but three fully operational prototype aircraft. Each one tested different aspects of sixth-generation technology. The first explored new forms of stealth, using quantum materials that could actively adapt to radar waves. The second tested autonomous combat systems that could outmaneuver any human pilot in simulated dogfights. The third, and this remains highly classified, reportedly demonstrated capabilities that senior Air Force officials call revolutionary. The master plan was unprecedented. 200 of these advanced fighters would command a force of 1,000 autonomous combat aircraft, the CCAs. Each CCA would carry its own advanced sensors, weapons, and AI systems. In combat, they would operate like a wolf pack with the manned NGAD fighter as the alpha, coordinating attacks at digital speeds. But as 2024 dawned, Project Dominance faced its greatest challenge yet. The price tag had swollen to $300 million per fighter enough to buy four F-35s, and a crucial question emerged. In an era where autonomous systems grow more capable by the day, does America really need the most expensive fighter jet in history? The origins and current force. To understand why America needs a $300 million fighter jet, we need to travel back to 2009, a year that would reshape the future of American air power. The F-22 Raptor had just proven itself as the most lethal fighter ever built. With its radar cross-section roughly the size of a marble, it could slip through enemy defenses undetected. It could track targets from 150 nautical miles away, cruise supersonic without afterburners, and execute 28-degree angle of attack maneuvers while maintaining perfect control. The Air Force had an ambitious vision. 750 F-22s would dominate the skies, while 1,700 F-35s would strike ground targets. A perfect team, each playing to its strengths. The F-35 Lightning II was never meant to replace the F-22. It was designed to complement it. Think of the F-35 as a quarterback on the battlefield. Its strength isn't in dogfighting like the F-22, but in its brain. Each F-35 processes 400 gigabytes of data per second, using advanced radar systems that can detect targets 147 miles away, a 360-degree infrared coverage system, and electronic warfare capabilities that can map entire battlefields. 
When these jets work together, they're nearly unstoppable. The F-35 sensors can detect missile launches from 800 miles away, instantly feeding that data to F-22s, which can then strike while remaining invisible to enemy radar. But in 2009, everything changed. Secretary of Defense Robert Gates, looking at ongoing conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, made a decision that would haunt the Pentagon for decades. Halt F-22 production at just 195 aircraft. His logic seemed sound at the time. America was fighting insurgents in pickup trucks, not sophisticated air forces. The Cold War was over. Why spend billions on air superiority fighters to combat an enemy that didn't even have an air force? Then the world changed again. China unveiled its J-20 stealth fighter. Russia developed the Su-57. Together, they could field over 1,500 advanced fighters, a force that dwarfed America's fleet. Today, each American F-22 squadron must protect 120,000 square miles of airspace, triple what it was designed to cover. The F-35 has been forced to take on air combat roles it wasn't optimized for. While America's F-22 production line went cold, our competitors kept building. They studied our technology, copied our innovations, and developed countermeasures specifically designed to defeat our advantages. This created an urgent crisis. How does America maintain air superiority with a fighter fleet just one quarter the size it needs? The answer was supposed to be NGAD, the next generation of air dominance. But at $300 million per aircraft, the cost of four F-35s, the cure might be worse than the disease. The reality check. By 2024, NGAD ran headfirst into fiscal reality. Air Force Secretary Frank Kendall revealed the staggering numbers. Each NGAD fighter would cost $300 million, equivalent to four F-35As at $75 million each, or seven fourth-generation F-16s. The Air Force faced an unprecedented budget crunch. They needed $100 billion for nuclear modernization, including the Sentinel ICBM program. The Space Force required $30 billion for satellite constellations and ground systems. Base defenses against hypersonic threats would cost another $15 billion. Something had to give. In the summer of 2024, Kendall delivered a stunning announcement. NGAD would be paused for a comprehensive strategic review. Budget constraints, however, were not the sole factor driving this decision. The threat landscape had evolved dramatically since the program's inception. Autonomous technology had advanced faster than anyone predicted. Intelligence reports showed China's next-generation fighter program progressing at an alarming rate. The Air Force is going back to the drawing board, asking fundamental questions that will reshape the future of aerial warfare. As Vice Chief of Staff James C. Slife put it, how do we achieve air superiority in a contested environment? That's very different from asking, how do we build a sixth-gen manned fighter? The new approach. Instead of pursuing a single, all-encompassing fighter, the Air Force is exploring a revolutionary distributed approach. Imagine a network where radar systems, weapons, and sensors are spread across multiple platforms. As General Slife explains, the radar may be in one location, the munition may be in another. General Alvin introduces another revolutionary concept, the light fighter. This represents a fundamental shift from the Cold War mentality of built to last toward a new paradigm of built to adapt. The message becomes clear. Air dominance may not require the perfect fighter, but rather the perfect combination of systems. Early 2024 marks a breakthrough. Andoral Industries and General Atomics secure contracts to develop production-ready collaborative combat aircraft. These aren't ordinary drones. They're autonomous wingmen designed to multiply the effectiveness of every manned fighter. The XQ-67A's first flight in February 2024 proves the concept's viability. With its common chassis design and modular mission bays, one aircraft can transform from air-to-air -air fighter to strike platform to electronic warfare system. The Air Force's vision is bold. 150 units within five years, growing to a force of over 1,000 CCAs. The B-21 Raider emerges as a game-changer, America's first sixth-generation combat aircraft. Major General Scott Pluss frames it perfectly. If we characterize it as a fighter, we're thinking too narrowly about what kind of airplane we need in a highly contested environment. Its capabilities are staggering. Quantum radar systems with unprecedented range, multispectral sensor fusion, and electronic warfare systems rivaling NGAD's planned capabilities. In future operations, each B-21 could control up to 10 autonomous drones, penetrating 5,000 miles deep into enemy territory. At $780 million per aircraft, it's expensive, but its versatility could revolutionize air warfare. While looking to the future, the Air Force isn't neglecting its current assets. 
The $10 billion upgrade program transforms the F-22 for modern combat. AIM-260 long-range missiles, enhanced data links, advanced electronic warfare systems, and crucially, the ability to control autonomous wingmen. The investment is well-placed. After 500,000 flight hours, the F-22 fleet shows remarkable resilience. 72% mission-capable rate, 94% airframe life remaining, and still unmatched in air combat effectiveness. The emerging picture is clear a networked combat system where every platform plays a vital role. F-22s dominate air-to-air -air combat. F-35s orchestrate the battlefield through advanced sensors. B-21s project power deep into enemy territory. CCAs extend reach and multiply combat power, all connected through quantum networks, creating an integrated force greater than the sum of its parts. This evolution raises fundamental questions about NGAD's future. Does America need a $300 million dedicated 6th generation fighter when the B-21 already offers 6th gen capabilities? Could enhanced F-22s with autonomous wingmen provide a more cost-effective solution? Should investment shift toward drones and platform upgrades? By late 2024, the Air Force must chart its course. This isn't just about choosing an aircraft, it's about defining the future of air warfare itself. The decision will reshape everything from pilot training to base infrastructure to combat tactics. These next few months will determine whether America's sixth-generation fighter takes flight or whether air dominance requires a more distributed, autonomous approach. One certainty remains. The competition for tomorrow's skies intensifies daily. America's challenge is maintaining its edge in an increasingly contested domain.